Ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually sitting here watching a video of Otis Redding, and he's talking about sitting on his base of docks. And I figured we would start this video off with this young man in my background. Thank you, Otis. He shouldn't have left that home. He shouldn't have headed to Frisco. That was the wrong place to be heading in the early 60s. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, while Otis plays in my ground, my background, you may not hear him as well as I do. I just want to talk to you all. Um, I am transitioning because SACOM has taken care of uh, many things. Hold on one second. Well, that is the case. I have something I have to show you all. I did a Google search for SACOM because I was showing somebody about the PDF. And when I was doing the Google search, I saw SACCOM 911 complaints. Figured there really there are people out there complaining about COM? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take the time to explain things. Um, yeah, we can do it now because everything is just about complete. And it is absolutely necessary. There were... There were a lot of individuals who, now I'm the first person to tell people, take what we do and improve on it. Make it your own. Ladies and gentlemen, people were taking what we were doing at SACOM and just copying it directly. They weren't making it their own. They weren't adding anything unique to it. They were just trying to mimic us. As we discussed in a previous video, the... One thing the individuals didn't know is about the cover letter, because we didn't show that copy to people. I kept telling people that we don't show everything to you all, because we're not required to. That's not part of our agreement. We never agreed to that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these individuals, give me a second. Let's see if I can find, there it is right there. I'm not going to read the whole letter. This is for SAT PAC individuals. So this will go up on the Eon channel. But that date and everything is just letting you know that we've been updating it. But it says, first and foremost, we'd like to thank you personally uh, to all of our depository members. A lot of people didn't understand that SACOM was a depository organization. We were a securities organization where individual received a template and then made it their own and then deposited that template with us. And they originally used their birth certificate as securities for the template, for the deposit. We then took it and we registered it with the government because, you know, that's what we do. Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, goes ahead and explains all of that information. It doesn't matter. You don't have to pause it or anything like that. All of our SACOM individuals who received the letter explaining everything from beginning to end, what was to take place, what to do next, uh, how things are to be done. Huh. Says my connection appears to be down. My connection ain't down. I have no idea why. There we go. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I guess the AI system. See, I just went and watched the video the other day about the Google AI that they are saying is sentient because the AI system actually had a sense of humor. As I was been trying to tell the people at SACCOM that the AI system that was designed by Google and several other industries uh, Elon Musk, Microsoft, all of these companies, uh, you got uh, Alexa, all of these different companies. You only hear about the big ones because those are the commercial ones, but you don't get to hear everything they do. The election. Google's AI literally 
literally took in all of the information on Google and continues to take in the new information. All of the search requests, all of the information in those requests, all of the links, Google's AI knows all that. Any question you want to ask it, it can give it to you. That's why I say, ask Google. Y'all don't hear me, though. That's the way they develop the AI. That's why you always see me going to Google. Because I will find the answer I'm looking for. Why? Because that system was designed that way. But that wasn't the only way it was designed, ladies and gentlemen. That system was designed that way so that they could take advantage of you and me. That's why they're constantly finding where you are, locating where you are, all of your searches, downloading it, listening to every phone call, listening to every conversation, even when you turn your phone off. That's why they placed the battery inside to where you couldn't remove it. Apple was the first to do this. Go back. Apple was the first to put the battery internal where you couldn't remove it. Why did they do it? Because they're recording every single thing you say, even when your phone is turned off. Sorry. It's just what they do. That's why Mr. Eric Schroeder, Schroeder will tell you the first thing he does is open it up and he disconnects the mic. Now, for somebody like me, disconnecting a mic is like, you know, uh, Armageddon. Because I can't live without that mic because I do speech recognition. But I don't mind because, ladies and gentlemen, I don't say anything that's secretive. My life is an open book. I have no more secrets. Take it and run with it. I'm not embarrassed by anything, and I got nothing to hide. Okay. That leads me to this question right here. I'm sorry. I'm looking at some of the uh, puppies because they're inside here. It was a very hot day. I told everybody about the heat. I will tell you guys about the story about what happened this weekend, and you can go look at the satellite to prove it. I won't tell you that story right now. I'll save that for another day. But remember, the date was July 18th, 2000. No, sorry, not July 18th. July 18th, it wasn't July 18th. It was July 17th. It was uh, Sunday. July 17th, 7 22 Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you the story. You want to hear the story? I don't really want to hear no story right now. It's a little too late, homie. Well, you don't hear the story anyway. I just told you I didn't want to hear no story, homie. Okay, what, what? Put your fingers in your ear, okay? And then sit up there and pucker up and go kiss your own behind because you're going to hear the story. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tatians are in my background and they're talking about somebody else's imagination. Okay? Running away with them. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday was supposed to be a very hot day. The, the high was supposed to be at least 110. My neighbor tells me that we got to 120 the day before. Now, my thermostat didn't say the same, but he has a thermostat on the side of his property, and he's saying that's what it read. Now, do I out him? No, because I've been in 120 degree heat, and with the so called heat index, it most certainly did feel like that. I'm sitting up here wondering how I'm going to keep dogs cold. Now, I have two air conditioning units on this vehicle. They both work. Matter of fact, I just turned them on the other day, uh, even today, for two hours to cool this place down for them. It's not enough. Okay, I can't run them all day. My solar system, it's not that the solar system is not powerful enough. My backup battery. And the equipment range is not powerful enough. So I went to Walmart. I, well, I ordered from Walmart a portable air conditioning unit. Created a stand for it. I can put that on the inside because it doesn't emit any gases, so I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm dying. Okay. Um, and I'm not trying to make it real cold. Just trying to bring the temperature down. So I got the unit. The unit said it's supposed to be 5 amps. Unit says it's supposed to be 500 watts, actually 700 watts. I wasn't trying to buy a 700 watt unit. It advertises 500 watts. 500 watts, I can handle that. Because it takes uh, just a little bit. My system can handle up to 3,000 watts. 
It's just I don't want to max it out at 700 watts. I use the 700 watt. Now, I only have, do you understand? So that means that I can't run the refrigerators and the computer and anything else I want to run. I have three, four refrigerated units here. One of them is a water cooler. And the greatest thing in the world I could have ever done is buying a hot water cooler. That right there is a lifesaver. Saves so much time and trouble, especially during the summer here. If I'm really hot and I need a cold glass of water immediately, it's right there for me. And during the winter, if I need a hot glass of water, if I need to cook something real quick, hot water, instant. So, yeah, and it's a bottom loader. Okay, it's not like many of you, a bottom feeder, it's a bottom loader. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, finish this story if you guys don't mind. So, after I got from speaking with my neighbors, I knew how hot it was going to be this day, and I'm... Didn't want any of the puppies to die because I really hate death. So I'm sitting there, and I walk to the door, and look out, and I look out at the other two dogs, and I look out at their house, and I say, Jehovah, I can't do this without you. I said, I don't ask you for anything trivial. You know that I only ask you for what I need. I said, but... I can't do this without you. And I said, you said you would help me. And I didn't have to say anything else. All I wanted was wind. You see, here where I live, we get wind three times a day. 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., well, 4.45 p.m., and then... Sometimes we get it two other times during the same day after getting it all those times. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the last couple of weeks, we haven't had any wind. So it's been stifling. No humidity, no wind, just radiating heat. And so eventually I got the idea because I had to hydrate the animals. So I was taking a, a plastic spoon, adding water to it, and just pouring it into their mouths to keep them hydrated. And then I realized, wait a minute, I have a bunch of spray bottles here. I mean, I have a ton of spray bottles because I spray things down. And my solar panels spray them down with water bottles that are pretty powerful. And so I said, wait, I'm going to put the spray bottles on mist, and I'll spray it near their mouths, not, you know, shock them to death. Uh... I got to tell him I'll call him back. Anyway, not to shock him to death or drown him, but enough just to, you know, when you're dehydrated, you just need to get the mouth watered and you pretty much feel better. Well, that's what I was doing to them, and I was spraying down their coat and having a fan on them, not trying to freeze them to death, but trying to make them feel as if they were in an air conditioner. That way their hair, the wind blows, it feels cooler, they're cooler. And that's what I've been doing to them every day, and they have been comfortable with me doing that. Just an idea that came after talking to the God that I serve. But here's the point. Right after I told him I needed his help and that I couldn't do this without him, I come back to my computer. Now, remember, I just went outside. I actually went outside, looked around, no clouds. And I'm not joking. I purposely went outside, looked around, no clouds. I also went to see if there was any air. No air. So I come back inside, and all I could do was come back inside and get in front of the computer. And I look up at the monitor because of the computer uh, focusing on or the monitors focusing on the surrounding area around me because I have cameras. So I looked at the cameras and I saw a cloud. I'm like, I just came from out there. There was no cloud out there. So I go back out and I look and there's a cloud. And it's forming. Now, when I look in the screen, I took a better look at it. And it wasn't all that great, all that big. I go outside and it's twice the size as it was on a monitor. The monitors are actual size. They're not zoomed or anything like that. I go, 
Oh, now that's interesting. And then I thought about Elijah and the prophets of Baal and where it was Jehovah versus the prophet of the Baal. And after that, uh, there had been a famine for three years and so forth. And I thought about that cloud. And that's exactly what occurred, ladies and gentlemen. So I called one of my friends up and I told her. She says, oh, so the cloud just went over your house, huh? I said, go and look at the satellite for this day at 1 p.m., Look at it at 12, and then look at it at 1. You'll see there were no clouds, and if you look at the report from the so-called forecasters, no rain was in nobody's forecast for at least another two weeks. And then all of a sudden, there is a, what do you call that, monsoon developing. But then there's a storm off of the New Mexico, uh, not New Mexico, but Mexico coast that goes all the way up the west coast like a nor'easter. Literally, it goes all the way up the West Coast, past Los Angeles, past me, all the way near San Francisco, and then starts heading east. That's not how things go, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen it happen before with hurricanes and things, but that's not how things go. And nobody had forecast it. But what I will tell you, it did. Brought down the temperatures, brought us some wind, made things a little bit better. You know, ladies and gentlemen... I did not know that the group that sang this song right here, I want y'all to listen. Okay, you can't change that. All I want you to know, I did not know that the group that sang the Tell me, baby! Ooh. I'm sorry. You can't change that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this song right here is one of those I grew up to, but I didn't know the name of the group was called Radio. You can change your telephone number. You can change your address, too, but you can't stop me from loving you. No, you can't change that. Okay, know this song. This is one of those songs that going cross-country, this song would come on and everything would just be mellow. The ride would be a whole lot smoother. And so when it came on, I decided to just let it play in the background, not to skip it, but this is one of my songs. That's all I'm trying to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, nobody else does videos like this, so I'm sorry. This is just the way it is, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry about that too. Go someplace else, because it's what I do. Don't advertise. Why? Well, because I don't want anybody thinking that they owe me anything. Because I dang sure don't know nobody nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to mute, or not mute that. You know what? I do have a mute button. I don't know where it is on, this is a cheap remote. And so I, I know the mute button's on here. There it is right there. That's a shame. I have a mute button and I haven't been using it. Dag it. I'm going to let them play in the background. And I can use this channel and let this play with the dogs when they're in here so that they can hear something going on in the background in the tomorrow morning when I'm getting up and cleaning up and straightening up because I got to make a space in the living room for the dogs. Um, when I'm doing that in the morning, I will let that play in the background. Let's get to the meat of this video. I'm sorry to have taken 18 minutes talking about some things that are of import, but other things that was just me ladies and gentlemen at 19 minutes is where you need to be there are a lot of people who are being done wrong by corporations and the one thing a corporation wants you to do is sue them and they're just going to pass it off to their shareholders ladies and gentlemen don't sue the corporation that's why we created the contracts the arbitration clause don't sue the corporation that's why we created the contracts with the arbitration clause what you're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is you're going to sue the insurance company for the corporation. They all have insurance, ladies and gentlemen. You want to file a claim with the insurance company. You don't just want to file one claim. You want to file, sorry, you want to file one claim, but you want other people who have a same gripe to file another claim. So go on to Google, find out who has a claim, and let them know. Sue the insurance company. Enough complaints takes away their insurance, raises their premium. They will get the message. They will settle. So you're going to call them and ask them for their insurance 
whom their insurance company is. If they tell them that they are self-insured, that's a lie. If they tell you that they are self-insured, that's a lie. And then you're also going to call the Secretary of State, and you're going to complain to the Secretary of State. Secretary of State is going to tell you you need to file a complaint. So what I want you to do is take and put down the who, what, why, when, where, and how. Okay? Do a complaint already. Call it a complaint. Call it a consumer complaint. Now, I, if it were me, I'd call it a civilian consumer complaint. CCC, civilian consumer complaint. Why? Because you're not a citizen, you're a civilian. Let me say it again. You're not a citizen, you're a civilian. You're part of the military, you're not part of the police force. And the military has no jurisdiction over civilians. Do your research. The military has no jurisdiction over civilians. Do your research. Go back and take a look at the fact that the March 1933 Act is a military act. Stop being citizens, people. That's how they get jurisdiction over you. Don't be a state citizen. Don't be a foreign national. Somebody told me that today. Foreign national, they created that term. Pay attention. Foreign national, they created that term. You didn't create that term. Why don't you just be a man or a woman? See, they don't have a definition for a man or a woman. Do you know why they can't define a man or a woman in their so-called legalese, in their laws? Because they didn't create man or woman. They don't own it. They didn't patent it. That They didn't trademark those titles. So they have no jurisdiction over those titles. And that's all you got to do is tell them. You don't have to argue with them or not. Tell them you need to prove who you are. And don't tell me who you are. You need to prove who you are. Look, ladies and gentlemen, these courts that are there do not have judicial power. Pay attention to what I'm saying. These courts that you're walking into do not have judicial power. They have legislative power or administrative power, but they do not have judicial power. So challenge their power and authority. Don't challenge in rem, personam, and subject matter. Challenge their power and authority. Say, I do not believe that you are part of the judicial branch of government, and I just need to see proof. Some type of certified document showing that this is a judicial branch of government location, organization, and you're operating under that power. I promise you they will never, ever provide that information, but as long as you got that on the record, saying, and if you're not that, then you don't have any jurisdiction over me because that's the only, only venue that I've consented to. Hold on, man. What do you mean that's the only venue you consented to? Ladies and gentlemen, go back and look at the Constitution. You may not have been there when the Constitution was written and put, in the, put together, but let me, let, me, let me go ahead and explain it to y'all so that y'all get it. You may not have been there when the Constitution was written and put together, but let, let, me, let me go ahead and explain it so y'all can get some understanding. But you are part of that progeny. You are part of the prosperity. You are part of the general welfare. You're part of we the people. And you know what they can't say? They can't say that you're not. Okay? Nor can they prove that they're not. But I guarantee you one thing, they have no jurisdiction over it. Go ahead, look at one constitutional agreement or amendment. That's what amendments are, they're agreements. One constitutional amendment that gives them jurisdiction over any of the people. Go ahead, look at 9 and 10. They both talk about rights retained and reserved. Where do you think they get reservation of rights from? Where do you think they get reservation of rights? Go back and look at 10 and 9. Of the Constitution. If they had absolute authority, ladies and gentlemen, the Ninth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment would not be there. You guys really got to start understanding not what your rights are. The Constitution didn't give you any rights. You got to understand the limits of their authority. And stop going in there yelling and screaming and hollering and interrupting them. When you start to speak and they interrupt you, you just say, excuse me. This is a hearing, right? Let them say whatever they want. 
So if this is a hearing, that means that there's equal time because that means the principles of equal protection and due process apply here. So to make this go easier without there being a claim of denial of due process, I will need you to refrain while I am speaking. If you ask me a question and I am answering the question, do not interrupt me. And I'll do the best I can not to interrupt you while you're speaking. But while I'm speaking, stop interrupting me. I will insist on equal time. And if you refuse to give me equal time, then that means that you are not who you say you are. That means that you do not have the authority and you're not operating under the jurisdiction you claim to be operating under. That means that you're a rogue. That means that you're a rogue agent, agent and I will file a complaint against you, not with no stupid judicial commission. Judicial commission doesn't operate anything. That's an administrative agency. No, I'll file a complaint against you with the attorney general's office. Yeah, an officer of your court who has investigated powers. And when they ignore it, then I'll file it with the United States Congress or the state legislature because those are the people who put you in office. But one way or another, you will respect me and I will do the best I can to show you all due respect in return. And then you say what you have to say. You don't have to argue with them, but let them know this is not going to be the type of hearing where you get to talk over me and say things about me if you defame me or attempt to embarrass me or lie on me sitting on that bench under that capacity, that means that you are not a judicial official. That means you are not protected by judicial immunity because only individuals acting in their official capacity are protected by immunity when acting as a judicial officer. It's called judicial immunity for a reason. You have to be acting in the judicial capacity in order not to be held liable. Just because you hold a title doesn't mean you are immune absolute. And yet I did say immune absolute purposely. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't call me into their courtrooms. They don't want me to testify. They cannot afford to have me testify. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I will be testifying. I will be the first witness in the lawsuit that we're getting ready to file. You'll be hearing about that lawsuit at the beginning of next month. I'll talk about it briefly from time to time, but you'll be hearing about that lawsuit. Again, I have companies that, well, see, I've been blackballed throughout the whole system. I can't accomplish anything or get anything done. Every single corporation, every single company, causing me one headache after the other. Oh, and on the state level, it's even worse. I mean, they're just blatant with it. And so I have to get their attention. And I'm about to get their attention because there's only one way to get someone's attention. And that is to walk right up to them and sock them aside to the side of their head so that they understand. Sorry, but got to keep hitting until you get to the white meat because they don't understand. And here's the thing. I'm not battling with them. See, that's what they want. They want me to put all my attention and focus on them. That's why I said there's been a reshaping of things so that I am not pulling all of my attention from the organizations I put together to focus on this junk. I will take my time. And again, when it comes to those homeowners and the defrauded homeowners, what I will be doing, and you have my word, people, what I will be doing is I will be sitting back waiting for the trial date because I'm going to dispense with all of the so-called pre-trial hearings. They don't need for us to have no pre-trial hearing. No, no, we don't need to be talking for no 15 minutes. That's a game that y'all play. Uh, by you delaying this, delaying this, delaying this. Hey, here's my boy. This, this is him when he was black. And he had a chin. A and a nose. So we fell out finger painting. Finger Y'all know about finger so painting? Monday, that was Monday, Monday? I stepped up to her and I said, What did you say to her?
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got to say this because everybody knew it back then. That fool could sing. Okay, as a child, that fool could sing. Sorry. And anybody who says he couldn't is on crack. And man, all right. So let me get back to the end of this conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you need to stop being afraid of the courts. I've been dealing with them since I was 15. If I could go in front of a judge at the age of 15, you all at the age of 30, 40, 50 can go before a judge. You just got to stop bringing all that junk. You guys don't realize that a lot of the stuff that you hear on YouTube, those are judges telling their agents to do the videos and put that junk out there and paying them to do it. Come on now. The original gurus. Now, okay, if you pay attention to Tim Turner, you knew who Tim Turner was because Tim Turner didn't hide. He he was 100% legit. Winston Stroud. Now, there, were, there may have been some things about the personalities or some things they may have and may not have done that you may not have appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the point that I'm trying to make here. I'm trying to point out the people who was there. Okay? The people who were there. Doug Riddle. Okay? Those people. I'm talking about the gurus. I'm talking about the Jonah Bays and the um, Yusuf L's. I'm talking about those gurus. I, I'd even go so far as to say Jerry Kane, the late Jerry Kane, and Patrick Devine. You know, the problem is I never met Patrick. I knew of Patrick, but I never met him. I never listened to anything Patrick ever did, I promise you. Not because I like Patrick or I didn't like Patrick. What people didn't understand, the only person I ever listened to that I listened to listened to was Sam Davis. And the only reason why I listened to him is because he did a seminar and I decided I wanted to listen to his seminar. And I liked it. Okay, I liked it. And then Gordon Hall, when him and Brandon were together, I, I listened to about 40 minutes of their thing. Uh, because I knew that Brandon was the face and Gordon Hall was the man behind the scenes because I could see him operating and pulling strings just by watching the video. So what I'm trying to say is, ladies and gentlemen, too many of you are just listening to people talk. Each of the people that I just mentioned to you, they showed you what they were doing. They showed you where the information was coming from. The very first thing very first video, the every single video since then, I tell you where I'm getting my information from. I don't just talk. You can take what I say and go verify it. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. That's what I, 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 I command that. I say that to everybody. Prove me wrong. To the present day, nobody's ever proved me wrong. Now, I've caught myself with twice having said something and having to go back and say, no, I was wrong on that. Just like uh, the, oh, but I disproved it <laughs> today. The national banknote, it turns out that it became the Federal Reserve banknote, believe it or not. I don't know what year it became when I was doing the research. That's what it turned out to be. And so I, because... Federal Reserve is a national bank. So the bank note has to be under the Federal Reserve since the Federal Reserve Act. And I guarantee you if I go and I do the research on the Federal, the national bank note, I'll see that it was absorbed by the Federal Reserve under the Federal Reserve Act, which it originally was created, and I want you to pay attention, national bank note was originally created by the Act of 1864. The Bank Act of 1864, which is the original Federal Reserve Act. Shh, hold on now. That was the original Federal Reserve Act. Go back and look at the Federal Reserve Act and you'll see that's exactly what they did. Okay? Took that act and expounded on it. Because this is what America does. They trick you. 1864, they made you think that, yeah, we need to come up with a bank law because, you know, these greenback things, we need to take care of this currency thing. Okay? And so they came up with a banking act. 
1933. Oh, we just had a depression. Oh, <laughs> got all these banks on holiday. We need to come up with a bank and somebody money and all this. Stuff. And they did. But it was all amendments to the Federal Reserve Act. Each of the acts, 1864, the original Federal Reserve Act, 1913, the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act, technically the actually officially called the Federal Reserve Act, the June 6th, 9th, I mean June 6th, October 6th, 1917. Ladies and gentlemen, we refer to October 6th, uh, 1917 as the Trading with the Enemy Act you'll see it's an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Then the March 9th, 1933, an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Just pay attention. That's what it's been about this whole time. What you need to focus on is contacting the Federal Reserve and asking them about how to make deposits of securities into the Federal Reserve Bank. And then show them the statute and say, how do I comport with this statute. I'm not gonna tell you, but you have to at least ask, you have to do in writing, and if you do it over the phone, you have to record it. You have a document that you tried, and then now you can go after them for blocking your access. You feel me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is the garbage day, trash day, and I gotta go put some garbage out. I. No, I'm not coming over to your house to put your grandmother outside, okay? Sorry, you're going to have to take care of that by yourself. A forklift or a crane, either one should work, all right? Yeah, you may have to get a permit. Yeah, as wide as she is, you you definitely going to get a permit, okay? All right, y'all take care. Have a Coke and a smile, and that's all, folks.